Hi, I'm Troy Maples with Coachman Catalina. Today we're going to give you a full plant walkthrough and take you through the construction process of every Coachman Catalina. We're standing back here in chassis prep right now. Some of the things that I want to be able to point out to you is our full length outriggers. This is the base of your structure. Our floors will not extend past these full length outriggers right here. So the floor will come right up to this. Now this is welded on to your steel chassis, so it gives you plenty of floor support. Another thing I'd like to point out right here, if you can see inside here a little bit, th these are where your tanks are gonna go. We add support to where your fresh water, your black water, your gray water tanks are gonna go, as well as adding horizontal support into the underbelly as well to hold those tanks up, to make sure that they're not just resting in, inside the underbelly. Another thing that I'd like to point out, at Catalina, we use rack and pinion slide-out systems. The rack and pinion slide-out system, as you can see, is built into the frame itself. So you actually have support in your slide-out that is built into the frame. This back bar rests on the very back end of the slide-out system itself. So this is the area that extends all the way out, gives you that support on the back side of your slide-out, takes a lot of that burden off the walls like you'll see with other slide-out systems. At Catalina, we offer it as a standard feature or an optional feature, depending on what kind of product you're looking at, to have an enclosed and sealed underbelly. Now, what you can see here is that the, uh, the enclosed underbelly is already on the chassis itself. They'll do that in the chassis flipper behind me. They will flip the chassis over, put the underbelly on. This does run the entire length of the coach. The other process that you're going to see here shortly is that we completely seal all the edges and any of the areas where you have to make some plumbing holes or anything like that to completely seal and create a dead airspace in our underbelly. Dead airspace helps with the insulation value because you don't have circulating air in there, so it takes a lot longer for that air temperature to, uh, to translate. Behind me is our floor jig setup. This is where we construct the floors. So as you'll see here in, in another little clip of the floor actually being constructed, Catalina uses nothing but tongue and groove plywood. It's four by eight foot sections of tongue and groove plywood that gets put on top of two by three base structures. You're also gonna notice that not only do we use a vertical strut system as the support base of the subfloor, we'll also put in horizontal struts in between the flooring to really add to the security of that floor. Now we're up here at our cabinet jig. As you can see, we utilize a jig system with a hydraulic press when putting the, our cabinets together. We don't believe in anything other than screwed cabinetry. No staples, nothing like that. So what we'll do is we'll pre-drill these holes into our lumber core styles, set them up on this jig system, and then screw them in place from there. This makes sure that there's no twisting or warping of the wood or anything like that. Everything sits nice and square, even along the inside walls and in the cabinet face fronts. At Catalina, because we're a lumber-built travel trailer, which means we utilize the wood sidewalls, all of our wood sidewalls are constructed utilizing a jig system. We have a left side or door side and a right side, off door side jig system. These jigs are used to maintain perfect consistency across the, every floor plan and every wall. But what they'll do is they'll wind up building multiple walls up on the same jig, again, to maintain that consistency in the build structure to make sure that when everything gets put on the structure itself, it lines up well. You'll notice the angle irons that we use there is to maintain nice square openings for our slide out openings. You'll also notice these backers, these wood plywood backers that we have on here. This would be an awning arm backer. You've got an outlet backer, speaker backers. Anywhere where we're going to secure something to the outside of the coach, go through the metal or into that wall, we're going to put a backer in place to make sure that it's holding on. We're not just hitting into dead air. The last thing that you'll notice are strapping. When we get over to roof set, you're gonna realize that we've got this added strapping on the roof as well. That's to make sure that the floors, walls, and roof are all built and held square in one cohesive unit. Now our Catalina is finally starting to take some real shape. Right now, where we're between, we're in between where metal set happens right over here to my left, and then what the unit looks like once the metal set's completed. What you'll notice over here in the completed side is that we actually route out all the metal portions where there's any openings, windows, doors, anything of that nature. The only thing we will not route out would be on this side. We will not route out the large openings like slide out openings, but we will route this out. What that helps us do is make sure that the metal stays nice and tight into the wall system itself. We don't have to worry about any missed measurements or anything like that. Again, the benefit to being able to route all of these holes out is to make sure that everything fits nice and tight. What that's going to help do is when our windows go in, when our baggage doors go in and the framework 
goes in there. It's gonna create a nice tight seal against the wall and the metal, preventing any air leaks or um, gaps in between the metal and the windows or the baggage doors itself. Another thing you're gonna notice, so right before metal set goes on, I wanna definitely show this. This is the insulation. So we use an R7 bat insulation, just like your residential home insulation that's in here. We do use a recycled material, that's why it's got more of a brownish color rather than that nice clean pink that you're probably used to seeing. But one thing that I would love to point out is the fact that every gap is filled with insulation before the wall goes on. We are very cognizant of the fact that we wanna make sure that we're giving you a very well insulated coach um, and there's no gaps in the insulation. Now we're up here where our roofs are constructed. At Catalina, we opt to use a jig system, as you can see behind me, where our entire roof system is built into one large piece for every individual trailer. So if it's a 36 foot trailer, then the roof for that 36 foot trailer goes on it. If it's a 28 foot trailer, we build out the full roof set. And then what we'll do is we'll crane it across, set it down and secure it in place, okay? Again, we're using jig systems up here to make sure that depending on the floor plan variations or any of the construction differences that could come along with the floor plan, such as where an AC is set, where a vent might be set, where the bathroom skylight's set, we have these jigs in place to make sure that we're putting those in the exact same spot every single time. Some key points in our roof construction includes our five inch bowed trusses. This is going to make sure that the top is not just a flat surface, it does bow over so that you can allow for water run up. It's also important to note that every 16 inches on center, we have these five inch bow trusses. That does make your Catalina a full walk-on roof coach. Now we're up in rubber roofs. At Catalina, we use a seamless TPO material. So when you're looking at the decking on top over here, what they'll do is they will apply an adhesive material all the way across the top of the roof decking, then roll the sheet of TPO across the top. They'll then make sure that they get every air pocket out of the rubber roof itself before securing and making sure that it wraps down. One of the things you're gonna notice is that on our finalized rubber roof, we are gonna have a little bit of a rollover. That's to make sure that there's no pooling areas or anything on the roof itself, that any water would roll off of that five inch bowed crown down into the gutter rail system and again, away from the coach. So this is a seamless material. One of the things that separates Catalina is the fact that we do apply that adhesive to the entire top portion of the roof prior to applying the rubber roof itself, not just in bits and pieces just to keep it down. At Catalina, we use a double bulb seal, double wiper seal slide out system. So this is gonna be the part of the slide out seal system that goes on your sidewall. We've also got them along the top edge of the opening there. So this is where your slide out's gonna come in and out. On our sidewall slide out system, one thing that's really cool, on the inside here, you can see this little ridge that's built in. This is an added layer of protection. If for whatever reason, beyond the bulb seal, behind the slide out system, behind this wiper seal, anything were to get in here, this makes sure that any water would drain down and away from the coach. So we've got a lot of different systems set up here with our slide out systems. The bulb seals that we utilize are, e we actually install ourselves, so they just slide right on here at the bottom. They're all cut to length so that we can make sure this would be your bulb system. You're gonna have one on the outside as well as on the inside. So these, very similar to a car door or a, a trunk, these will squeeze completely closed when the slide out's completely open or closed up and it creates an airtight seal. Again, very similar to the automotive industry or what you see in doors and trunks for them as well. Now we're in the slide out department. As you can see behind me, what we have is the slide out department is basically a much smaller version of everything that we've just gone through for the overall coach. They have their own jig systems for their sidewalls, their roofs, their floors. Um, and essentially what they're going to do is they're going to build the slide out box over here separately. Then they're going to lift that slide out box up, place it onto the rail system, the rack and pinion rail system, and then secure that slide out in place to make sure that it fits in there. Couple of key points on the slide outs that I'd like to point out. Our roofs on the slide outs are always going to be tapered. They're going to be slightly tapered so that they run away from the coach. Um, you can notice this on the inside as well as on the outside of having these tapered roofs. Another thing is at Catalina, we use a composite TPO seal that's on our um, thin wall board on here, but this is a nice waterproof tight seal. You'll notice very little give in the slide out wall itself here. So here you can see the slide out in place inside an actual unit. Here's your wiper seals that we had touched base on, your bulb seal right on here. They will 
make sure that they seal all the way down the length of the outside of the bulb seal here. You can see the completed unit even up top there. You can see the little bit of a taper right up there. Right underneath the slide out, you can see where this, the back of that slide out floor is secured. If you remember, we are touched base on that when we were talking about the chassis prep, having the actual back of the slide out room. So all that weight, not just being on the walls, but having actual support from the frame itself to the back of the slide out room is really something that differentiates the rack and pinion slide from the other slide out systems. Once the unit rolls out of the rubber roof scaffolding, that's when we start entering the fit and finish segment of the trailer. You're talking cabinet doors, uh, doors, window treatments, all the little fine touches that go inside the trailer itself. That's also where we'll enter the quality control phase. The quality control team will start walking around the unit inside and out and marking any quality defects. If there are any defects that need attention, what they'll wind up doing is calling those teams up to improve or fix those quality defects. Now, once we get through some of the quality control phase, it's also important to let you know every single Catalina goes through a water test, an electrical short test, as well as an airtight seal test. So behind me is actually our water container that we have. What we'll do with our water process is instead of just using air um, and trying to regulate it that way, we'll actually backfill with real water through the tanks and then back up through the drains to make sure that there are no leaks in our water system. So we're using real water to make sure that there's no water leaks in our system. Um, the electrical test, what we'll do is we'll send a charge through to make sure that there's no staples or screws catching any wires, that there's no electrical shortages anywhere throughout the coach. And then finally, the air tech test, what we'll do is we'll actually pressurize the unit with all the windows and vents closed and they'll go around the unit with a soapy solution. They'll be spraying this on any of the potential openings around the windows, around the edges where the self sealer was laid. We'll even do this on the roof to make sure that um, if there were any air leaks, what we would see is that soapy solution would send bubbles out through those gaps. And then we can address that to make sure that we don't have any um, gaps in any of our trailers. Again, every single Catalina that rolls offline goes through those three quality control checks regardless of it going to a secondary PDI or not. Thank you so much for watching our video today. For more information, visit us at coachmanrv.com or find us on Facebook. Have a great day.